The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to, to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Reading from Ephesians, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need so that the words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. And now let's stand together for the sequence hymn, I am the bread of life, page six. Uh... 
and I will raise Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread of that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. 
and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned that from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of our Savior. that the old crawl does that just for me so I can get up and then I remember oh no it's it's Jesus coming down the aisle that he does it for not just for me but I love it thank you Dr. Maltzby that was great Cheryl's over here cracking up She's like this is so awesome <laughs> okay week number three good people of God at uh, St. Richard's Church and everywhere that uses the revised common lectionary uh, year, um, year B, we are in the third week of six weeks of John chapter 6, the Gospel of John, chapter 6 of the Gospel of John. So far, we've seen Jesus feed 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish. We've seen Jesus walk out on the water and calm the storm. Jesus has healed the sick. And Jesus had begun to address the crowds of people that continue to seek him out. Last week in our gospel reading, Jesus started to redirect the attention of the crowds, the attention of the people who are flocking to him for healing and for feeding. Jesus is starting to redirect their attention beyond the physical healing that many have experienced as a miracle performed by Jesus, this miracle man. Jesus is starting to redirect their attention beyond the physical feeding that they have experienced, beyond the bread and the fish that they were given to by Jesus in that deserted place where he fed the 5,000. Jesus is starting to get them to open their hearts and minds to a totally new kind of life. Not just a life in time, but a life in eternity, a life in eternity. Jesus wants them to know that they have a life, that we have a life that does include our physical bodies, but we have to come to a new awareness that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience in this time and in this space, but there is much more to eternal life. There's much more. Jesus is pointing us there, beyond, and through him, to a life where there's no hunger, there's no thirst, to a life where there is satisfaction, complete satisfaction, a satisfaction that is deeply peaceful and that abides with us, stays with us. I am the bread of life, he tells them. Believe that God has sent me to draw you from a life of fear and poverty and hunger and death 
the light of abundance, the light of love, and the light of food. Redirecting their attention. And what do they do with this really good news that Jesus is telling them? They start to grumble and complain. They start to complain about it. So this is another allusion to the Exodus story that we've had through chapter 6 of uh, John's Gospel. Remember, back in the second book of the Bible, Moses leads the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt. That's our second book of the Bible. And those Hebrew people, the Israelites that, are, that came through the Red Sea on dry ground, that witnessed this amazing miracle, that were led by a pillar of fire by day, a pillar of fire by night, and a pillar of smoke by day, what did they do out there in the death? They complain. A lot. A lot. We're hungry. So God sends the manna every morning from heaven. We want to meet. So God sends them drips of quail. Too many birds for them to ever eat. I think the Bible says so it comes until so many quail that it's coming out of their nostrils. If they want to eat. We need water. So Moses strikes a rock. Water flows forth. You know what happened to all those grumbling Israelites? They grumble so much that God says, You need God needs to learn a lesson. And he keeps them wandering in the desert for 40 years. It didn't take 40 years to walk from Egypt to the promised land, but God kept them out there to learn a lesson. And you know how many people that came actually came out of Egypt and got into the promised land after 40 years? Two. They all died in the desert. It was their offspring that were born in the desert that got them. Moses doesn't even get into the promised land after those 40 years. He went grumbling with Getcha. <laughs> so Jesus warns the people, don't complain among yourselves. It was your ancestors, remember, who ate manna in the desert, and they died. They died. She says to them, I am here to give you something different. I am here to give you something more. I am here to give you something, a new way of understanding yourselves and each other. He says to them, no one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is God who is drawing them to hear Jesus, to listen to Jesus, to hear this good news, that this life is not all there is, and that there will be a time when the world will it always implies that there's some kind of resistance. John uses it when he describes drawing in heavy net full of fish, and in the book of Acts, it is used when Paul and, Paul and Silas are dragged before the authority, drawn before the authority in chapter 16 of Acts. There is a sense that when, while God draws us to faith, to believe, to hear the good news, our human will can resist. We can resist that draw, and we can turn away from it. Jesus goes on in John's Gospel. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, Jesus says. Very truly, I tell you. Whoever believes has eternal life. He is boldly and clearly stating that this teaching about a physical and spiritual life of abundance is from God. Not from any other place. It's from God. Jesus' earthly mission is to get people to believe that they are loved beyond measure by their Heavenly Father, who they are indeed seeing the goodness of the Creator. They are seeing the goodness of the Creator in the person of Jesus, who is telling them the truth that God loves them so much. God wants them around forever. Now, I, I don't think I can tell you that I have a person in my life who wants me around forever. 
But God wants you around forever. God wants me around forever. How amazing is that? That is good news. John in his gospel makes it clear that the healing and the feeding, and even later in the gospel, when Jesus will bring Lazarus back from the dead, all of these miracles are signs that are part of how God, through Jesus, draws us to this new understanding, this belief that this life is only one phase of an eternal life. Any suffering is temporary. Any suffering we might encounter is more easily endured as well. When you believe that Jesus is the bread of life, when you believe that you will ultimately be delivered from all suffering forever. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. Our gospel for this week wraps up with an added dimension. Jesus has been asking us to believe, believe, believe. Believe he is the bread of life. The gospel wraps up this week with Jesus saying, The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And now, John, the gospel writer, takes the bread of life discourse in a whole new direction. Next week, you will not hear um, chapter 6 of John's Gospel. Sorry, I know you're just kind of um, uh, So we're going to take a break from the Bread of Life discourse, because next week we are going to celebrate the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Then, the following week, the Reverend Dr. Dale Prescott will wrap up the Bread of Life discourse on August 22nd, um, and then, the end of the, the, the last Sunday of August, we'll be back to the Gospel. So, next week, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. Jesus will go on to say, next week's gospel, that those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. Either sounds very familiar or really, really gory. <laughs> but here's what's happening. John moves us from God drawing us to belief in Jesus as the bread of life down from heaven to now a new sacramental understanding of Jesus. For us now, especially in our church, St. Richard's, who gather, that gathers for the sacrament of the Eucharist each week around this table, those words sound familiar. Take eat, this is my body given for you. Take drink, this is my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. What happens next in John's Gospel is that Jesus gives us an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace that function to support our belief in Jesus as the Son of God, our belief in the promise of eternal life. It's supported in the Eucharist. In our sacramental action, we have a physical connection to our spiritual Savior. We are the body of Christ. The Eucharistic prayer that I am privileged, you give me the privilege of saying, is the prayer of the body of Christ. And you know what that prayer of the body of Christ does? It transforms those funny little wafers and those couple of drips of wine in our little communion sets into what? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Then, that when we receive the body and blood of Jesus, our belief is strengthened. Our belief that the resurrected body of Christ waits for us in a heavenly realm that we can't yet see.
must strive to interfere with God and to love his children and live in love like God does and gave himself for us. He wants us around forever. And now let us stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the 19th Creed on page 7 of your service bulletin. Uh, remember, we're using the expansive language version of the Eucharistic service today, so the words may be slightly different. They are slightly different. They are slightly different. They are. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, true God of not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, who was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the pure life, who proceeds from the Father, who is the Father and the Son, and is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sir, if you could follow on page 8 of your service bulletin. Please stand for me if you wish. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. This community, the nation, and the world. For all the work of justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, and For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Allison, Bob, Tom, Harry, and Dale, and Rich, our clergy, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, Mary Kay, Terry, Kay and Alex B, John, Pat, Bob C, Mary, Rudy and the Cooper family, Maria, Larry, Val, Meredith, Hazel, Stan, and Jenny, and family and friends, Sue, Mark, Spencer, Barbara, Jean, Hollis, Hollis family, Ramirez family, the Velasquez family, Atlento, Gavin, Tony, Jim and family, Bob H., Todd, Will, Lori and Bill, Carol, Jason, Drew, Angel, Morgan, Sandy, Sarah, Rachel and Emma, and Will and Jess. And we pray especially for Jim, our, our aspirant to the priesthood, Cheryl, our aspirant to the diaconate, teachers, first responders, our military personnel, healthcare workers, and others that we name. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life.
We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially Janice Morgan, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be always with you. Peace. God's peace be with me. Peace be with you. Peace. Thank you. Please be seated. I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, Jared, we'll, we're switching mics. We only have two lapel mics, so when uh, when there's when Dale's serving, we uh, I have to switch to this one for the announcements. So here's here I am with the announcements. St. Richard's is a church on a mission. We are here to discover God's grace, change our lives, and change the whole world. We do that in very many ways. This Friday, we are going to feed homeless people at the Coalition for the Homeless. Right, Maddie? Yeah! yeah. Maddie is going to be in the, um, outside the doors at the back of the church uh, for, to give you an aluminum pan and a recipe for our hamburger macaroni casserole that we make for the Coalition for the Homeless. Please, take a pan. Um, follow the recipe. Bring it hot if you can. Uh, at, at, if you can bring it hot, no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, this Friday the 13th, to the church kitchen, and then Maddie and our crew of people. And if you want to serve at the coalition, Maddie will also take your name and meet you either here at 4 o'clock to pack up and go down to the coalition, or you can drive directly to the Coalition for the Homeless on Terry Avenue in Orlando. That's our ministry for this coming Friday. We do it every month. Next week we'll do salad. This week we're doing macaroni, hamburger macaroni casserole. All right, name tags. I'm putting in an order for name tags. They're cheaper if I order more. So if you want a name tag, put your name at the top of the uh, uh, red book outside the door. Put your name on top of that and say name tag and I will, I will put an order in for you too. September 11th, we were going to have, we have postponed our art show, casserole, and cake bake off. We're just going to postpone it. So just stay tuned. Uh, however, next Sunday, Charlie Wilson is still going to meet anybody who wants to go to Divine Diners, which is our purely fellowship gathering, at Friendly Confines, which is on the corner of Aloma and 436, so in that shopping center. So please, one of those shopping centers. Uh, so if you are interested in some fellowship, Charlie Wilson will be meeting you there, uh, and uh, we're still going to have Divine Diners. And then um, the other thing that's still on, and you should see Julie Dunsworth, Julie, wave your hand. There's Julie Dunsworth, had an information session about her one-day grief workshop called Weaving Memories. It's uh, going to be a great workshop. She's got people signed up. August 21st, Saturday is when that workshop's going to be. See Julie Dunsworth if you are interested. Julie, uh, you can, is your contact information in the bulletin? I can't. It's in the directory. Okay. And if you want, uh, if you're out there in, in YouTube land, call me, call the church office. We'll uh, get you in touch with Julie if you want to sign up for that Saturday, August 22nd workshop. 21st, excuse me. August 21st.
Tonight, I will be in the church for um, our family-friendly Eucharist. Rich Wilson will be on uh, Facebook Live for evening prayer. But if you uh, want to come back for some more, um, uh, some more Jesus, I'll be here in, in the church hoping that maybe some of our, our families will show up. I'm, uh, we postponed them any movie night or any other fellowship activity. We're going to have it in the church but spread everybody out way, way far away because our children are still uh, not, not able to get vaccinated. So we, we will um, spread them out and keep them safe. Who's having a birthday? Heather Kirby? Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the coalition shirt thing. Uh, Rich, there's, or, yeah, come out and, and show us that shirt, Cheryl. For a little extra uh, boost for the coalition homeless, come on up. Heather will be taking money from you, 20 bucks. She'll get you a coalition t-shirt, and she'll donate some money to the coalition. 15 bucks. Oh, 15. 15. You could give her 20. Yeah, 25. 30. Do I hear 30? No. Uh, uh, she'll get you a coalition t-shirt. Uh, all the proceeds go to support the coalition. Heather Kirby, birthday. It's the 17th. Are you having a big birthday? What it for you, Heather Kirby? <laughs> She's gonna be 50. That's a big deal. That's a big birthday. On page 830 of your red prayer books, we are going to pray number 51 for Heather's birthday. Let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Pray her when she stands, comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful, and raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy big birthday, Heather Kirby. How about anniversaries? We celebrate anniversaries as well. All right. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. So 
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us, to his sac to unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country 
where with Richard and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the gifts of God and you are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Trust in him and you will 
communion prayers on page 14 of your service bulletin. Kneeling or standing as you wish, let us pray and give thanks together. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. We've got a great closing hymn today, God Be With You. It's found on page 15 and 16 of your service bulletin. Please stand.
Jesus Christ, our Savior.